Today we tell you about a film in which a stunningly beautiful girl is killed after becoming a top model, The Neon Demon. It exposes the ugly darkness of the modeling world. The film is bold in color, light and shadow, and the music is dreamy. It's a feast for the eyes. The story takes place in Los Angeles, USA. Young Jessie comes here alone to make her way. She has no talent, but only her beauty and body. So she plans to use her beauty to make a name for herself in the modeling world here. She asked her boyfriend to do a glamour shoot for her. During the shoot, she met Ruby, the makeup artist. They hit it off right away. Ruby learned that Jessie came to LA alone. Ruby not only invited Jessie to the party, but also introduced her two model friends. They are Sarah and Gigi. They're both well known in the modeling industry, but they were afraid of Jessie's beauty and didn't want to help. Jessie was disappointed and left. The next day, Jessie brought the photos taken by her boyfriend to the agency to apply for a job. At this time, the interviewer was very satisfied with her. Not only did he sign a contract with her immediately, he even called a top photographer to take a group of photos for her. After leaving the agency, Jessie went to her boyfriend and told him about her problems. But he told her to follow her heart. At night, Jessie returns to the cheap hotel where she's staying, only to find her room in disarray. She immediately called the landlord to check it out. It turned out that a lion had broken in. Jessie looked at the graceful lion and felt something inside her awaken. The next day, Jessie went to the shoot. Ruby carefully applied her unique makeup. The photographer was shocked by Jessie's beauty and saw endless possibilities for her. Afterwards, he dispersed everyone but Jessie. She was stripped naked and covered in gold paint. With her makeup on, Jessie looked like a glamorous lion, noble and elegant. The photographer's inspiration and Jessie's interpretation made for a perfect photo. But Ruby told the model sisters that the photographer had made an exception for Jessie, which made the two, who were already jealous of Jessie, even more so, worried that she would take their jobs away from them. Later, Jessie confirmed their concerns in an interview that Sarah attended at the same time. The famous fashion designer was impressed by Jessie's unique beauty as soon as he saw her. He chose her without hesitation. At that moment, Sarah, who had lost, ran into the bathroom in a rage. She smashed the mirror and tore up the photos she was so proud of. Jessie went to comfort her out of sympathy. But when she was sorting out the photos, she accidentally cut her hand on the mirror shards. But to her surprise, Sarah suddenly sucked her blood like a vampire. The scene changes and the fashion designer's show is about to begin. Jessie and Gigi are both invited. But Gigi makes a snide remark about Jesse. But Jesse, who only wants to realize his dream of becoming a top model, doesn't take her words seriously. At that moment, the designer asked Jesse to be the grand finale of the show. She did not disappoint the designer. Under the dreamy lights of the stage, Jesse changed her usual soft and innocent beauty. She showed a noble and cool charm, as if she is about to start her glorious modeling career. After the show, the dinner party begins. Jesse brought her boyfriend along. Afterwards, her boyfriend and the designer had a discussion about beauty. The designer complimented Jessie on her beauty and teased Gigi about her looks, which made Gigi feel even more resentful. But the boyfriend thinks beauty comes from within. But the designer thought he wouldn't even look at Jessie if he wasn't beautiful on the outside. At this point, the boyfriend felt offended. He asked Jessie if she wanted to leave with him. She reluctantly returned to the hotel with him. The boyfriend was disturbed by this incident. He was worried that Jessie would become like the sisters. But Jessie was not impressed and continued to revel in her beauty and the compliments she received from others. At night, Jessie stays alone in the hotel. She was terrified when she heard the girl next door being molested by the innkeeper. She runs to Ruby's house, but she doesn't realize that Ruby is gay. She was madly obsessed with Jessie and wanted to experience heaven with him. In the heat of the moment, Jessie pushes Ruby off the bed. Ruby leaves angry. The villa was empty, but Jessie wasn't the least bit alert. She's still in the throes of self-absorption. She'd even made it her home. She puts on her makeup and pretty clothes and wanders around the villa. At this time, Ruby not only returned home, she brought along the model sisters who hated Jesse. The three of them surrounded Jesse by the pool. They pushed Jesse's inflated ego into the waterless pool. And with that, Jesse's beauty ended, along with her life. But it wasn't over for the other three. They went crazy and ate Jesse, as if eating her would give them her beauty. Afterwards, Ruby washed the villa down with water. Ruby buried herself in the garden soil and went with Jesse. On the other hand, after the sisters left the villa. After leaving the villa, the sisters' careers seemed to really take off because they ate Jesse. That day, while a famous photographer was taking their pictures, Gigi wanted to vomit but Sarah saw it when she arrived. At this moment, she watched Gigi's agony with a blank face until she killed herself, and Sarah walked away without a trace of guilt. It was still sunny outside, but a beautiful young life is lost. The director of this film has neglected the fact that cinema is the art of storytelling. No matter how beautiful the images are, no matter how brilliant the light and shadow are, can't make up for the lack of plot. 
Of course, apart from the lackluster story, there are still some fascinating moments in the film. Through gorgeous light and shadow, the psychedelic post-apocalyptic feeling, it creates an atmosphere of decay, decadence, and madness. I don't know if it's the director's intention to criticize reality, to show everyone's ugliness, or does he have this aesthetic tendency? Anyway, it's sick. It's good for the eyes, but it's bad for the body. Jessie goes from being unaware of her beauty to a narcissist obsessed with her own beauty. She even said that you're satisfied to be my replica. I wonder if this is the subtext of the director's mind.